Hey y'all and welcome back to another segment here on GEMS Podcast. I am your founder and host, Miss Genesis Amaris Kemp. And with me in the hot seat today is the special guest, Tola Beni. And here is a bit about Tola. So she worked in HIV prevention clinical trials for 15 years. And when she got laid off in 2019, she started a blog called Zulu, Zulu Sing Lead and Fab. I hope I said that right. In the single and fab. Single. <laughs> Zulu single and fab dot com. In her blog, she was writing about living under lockdown, her travel experiences and fitness and nutrition. She got certified as a life coach at the beginning of 2020, but couldn't launch her business due to the pandemic. While she was interviewing others about their lockdown experiences, she got the idea to start a podcast where she brings in guests to talk about a positive mindset and personal development topics. Tola is a is also a professional writer who writes about health and human relationships. She lives in Cape Town, South Africa. So without further ado, please welcome the woman behind it all, Tola Beni. <laughs> Thank you so much, Genesis. I really appreciate it. That's, that's quite nice of you to invite me. My pleasure. And before we dive into our topic, focusing on positive mindset and self-love, I definitely want to give my audience a chance to connect with you on a personal level. And I like to do that one or two ways. And I'm sure you're familiar with what's happening next. (laughs) We can do an icebreaker or a rapid fire 10 question game. What are you in the mood for? (laughs) I'll <laughs> try the rapid fire. Oh, not my strongest, but I like to challenge myself. Okay, here we go. We're playing rapid fire with Genesis and Tola. Question number one. If you could trade places with anyone, who would it be? Oh, Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Wouldn't everybody? <laughs> Question number two. Dream car or dream home? dream home for me Ooh, absolutely yeah. I'd, I'd rather have comfortable home home of my dreams than a dream car it, the car is not that important to me it's important but not as important as a home question three are you a coffee tea or neither drinker coffee coffee anytime any day <laughs> give me coffee for the things I can't change <laughs> Question four, if you could hop back in a time machine and give your younger self a piece of advice, what would it be? It's to just leave your dream and be unapologetic. I would just be like, girl, do whatever makes you happy and do not apologize for it. Question five, what is the meaning of your name? (laughs) <laughs> oh goodness that's quite a story because I have to explain the whole it's a sentence really it actually Tolagele means um found or discovered or in my case when my parents had a baby they said a baby had been born a, you know yeah we've got a baby finally oh okay nice six favorite color black Seven, favorite food? (laughs) Tuna salad. (laughs) Eight, if you could be a fly on the wall and listen in on any conversation, past or present, whose conversation are you listening in on? Uh, Oh my gosh, Nelson Mandela, when they first told him they are releasing him, I would love to have had the conversation. Like what was his reaction and what did he say to them? Yeah. Nine, favorite, favorite movie, TV show or book? Favorite movie, The Usual Suspects or The Adjustment Bureau? And 10, our pass or play question, here are the rules. If you pass, our roles are reversed and you get to ask me a question. If you play, I ask one last question. So do you want to pass or play? 
<laughs> what a pace. <laughs> Okie dokie. What's your question? What are the things you'd love for your kids to know? What would you like to leave them with? Just one, you know, words of wisdom, one thing that you'd love to teach them. Mm. I definitely want to leave my kids with the sentiment that you can be anything that you want to be. You weren't born in a box, so don't let anyone place you in a box unless you decide to be in a box when the Lord calls you home. But until then, let your light glow and shine bright. I love it. (laughs) Great response. Thank you. Thank you for playing rapid fire with Genesis. So let's segue into positive mindset and self-love. As you know, we are currently in Mental Health Awareness Month, and I don't feel like it it should be just one month. I feel like it's something that needs to be year round because anyone can struggle with mental health, no matter your socioeconomic status, no matter your race, your gender, or your background. So with the work that you're doing around positive mindset, why is this so important to you? I mean, mental health has always been important, but I don't think it was ever as important as it is now. I think since the pandemic, the last two years, we've all just taken a huge knock in terms of our mental health in one way or another right because none of us has ever lived under these conditions and so I just you know from speaking with friends and other people many people are struggling in terms of their mental health so that's why it's very important to me and I come from a psychology background I've always been interested in in mental health um yeah so I totally agree with you it should be in all year round think it's it shouldn't be just you know we talk about mental health in May we should be talking about mental health all the time and we should be checking on our friends you know on a regular basis absolutely and when we check in on those um, friends as well as family members we need to do it from a non-judgmental standpoint where we're letting that individual know that we genuinely care and we're worried about what they're going through so just ask them the question are you okay is there anything that I can do for you is there something that is going on that you need to talk about and give them the opportunity to open up and offload on you and be mindful of how you react whether that's yeah. verbally or non-verbally, because your body language can yeah. give off a certain demeanor. Do not judge them. Listen actively. Let them finish speaking and then interject, because sometimes that individual just needs a sounding board. They don't right. need a scolding. They don't need somebody trying to fix them, which is why they came to you versus a paid professional. And then always offer them the support to go to a paid or trained professional because we are not equipped to handle what the professionals handle, but we are equipped to use both of these ears that God has given us to listen and be there for them. So Tola, whenever you think about positive mindset, And just really interjecting that with people in your network, as well as your clients, how can you help them, you know, really have that positive mindset? Because there's so many thoughts that go through our mind on a consistent basis, whether it's negative or positive, whether it's good or bad, or that those egos, that inner self-talk can sometimes be louder than the outward self-talk. Yes, and um, it's not. It's it's a it's quite a delicate issue too because I mean you're touching on ego now, you know, and often people don't want to be vulnerable because we all want to look like we're on top of things, right? <laughs> and and I was one of those people where my first answer will always be I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I was just not used to being vulnerable or saying I'm actually not okay. Um, you know, I thought I was expected to always be on top of things. And so now I have learned that if I'm really not okay, I should be able to say, actually, I'm not. And it just reminds me, you know, it's, um, 
some, there are times where I still have to remind myself. Um, let me make an example. A friend asked me last night, I was chatting to a friend on the phone and she said to me, so otherwise, how are you? And I said, oh, I'm good. God is really great, you know? And then I thought, like a minute later, I was like, actually, <laughs> I just recovered from COVID. <laughs> just... <laughs> three weeks ago but she doesn't know that because I didn't tell anyone I went through that by myself and I'm okay now I'm completely back on you know being my usual self but my first response was to say I'm okay you know but then I went back and I was like actually I just recovered from COVID and then we started talking about that you know and just sharing and learning from each other so it's something I feel like you have to like remind yourself that you know your first response shouldn't always be I'm okay <laughs> even when you're not okay so it's about teaching yourself to be and giving yourself permission to be vulnerable and also the same when it comes to your friend or your neighbor or whoever you're asking if you ask them how they're doing and they say they're okay is to just give them that space to maybe come back to you and say actually I'm not okay so just let them know that whenever you're ready to talk you know not to impose yourself from them but to give them that space to know I'm here whenever you're ready to talk and um, so that ultimately leads to you know you know having a cultivating a, a, a healthy mindset a positive mindset if we hold each other up like that I love that because iron sharpens iron and I love the fact that you yes. said you quickly said I'm actually just re recovering from COVID and you let your guard down to say that you were going through something, but you felt confident to share it with your friend who is a trusted friend. Because yeah. sometimes how many of us put on the mask and say, I'm okay, when in actuality, we may be screaming or crying out for help on the inside, or our demeanor has changed, or the way that we react with certain people, or our temp temperament, it goes from having a long fuse to a short fuse, and then we're yes. walking around like a walking, talking, ticking time ticking bomb. Time. <laughs> And when you snap at somebody, they're like, oh my gosh. But then you already had certain things that were festering up inside of you that you thought you had it all together. And let's be honest, like none of us are perfect and we don't all have it together. And if we did, we would be perfect. Or some of us would be like Jesus Christ, but we're not, or whoever you believe in. And it's okay. I'd rather be honest with yourself and those whom you love versus suffering in the silence and yes. wallowing in your own pain. And a big, oh, go ahead, Tola. No, I was going to say, I mean, you're talking about depending who you believe in, and I believe in God, right? Um, and also, I was going to say, it's also important to have those honest conversations with God, you know, because you can't lie to God, right? You can't say, I'm okay when you're not okay, because God knows you're not okay. So to also give yourself permission to say to God, to go to him him and say I'm not okay <laughs> you know and open that conversation to have with him because then if you can't speak to or if you're not ready to open up to your friends and family then there's one person that you can you know open up to without fear of judgment anyway I just wanted to take that on Absolutely. And I do uh, believe in God as well. And I believe sometimes whenever you're going through things and you may not feel like you have a trusted source, that non-judgmental person is God. Because even though you're speaking to him and you're pouring out, you're consecrating yourself, he will speak back to you, whether yeah. it's a soft, subtle voice or that discernment that he imparts into you. Or sometimes God would even use human vehicles. So I tell people, you never know when you may be in the company or presence of an angel or a human vehicle where God is allowing that human vessel to get a message to you but because that person doesn't look like the person you think the message mm -hmm. could come through you dismiss mm -hmm. them so be mindful of what you're dismissing and I always tell people you know try the spirit by the spirit if somebody tells you something but it doesn't feel right with your gut mm -hmm. instinct well, go get clarification, whether you're going to the Bible or those who are not religious, whether you're going to the universe or whoever you believe and pray to, because there's diversity when it comes to religion and who we believe in, believe yes. in. 
And another part that you focus on though a lot is self-love. And I think with self-love comes self-awareness. So in order to really love yourself, you need to be aware of who you are and not and not what the world wants you to be. So when it comes to self-love, what are some of the things that you like to work on personally with yourself as well as professionally with those who are doing life with you? I mean, it starts by, you've already touched on it. It starts by accepting, oh, well, self-awareness first, let's say that. And, and then once you are self-aware, you then have to get to a point where you accept yourself fully, completely. So I often say, you know, to my clients or to my friends, would you want to be your best friend? Because for me, that's that's the best way I could describe it if I look at myself and say I like this chick I would really love to hang out with her (laughs) you know for me that is there is no greater self-love than that so but if you ask yourself would you want to be your best friend and the answer is not really it's because there are certain things that you still have to work on right and it also shows that you haven't really achieved that ultimate self-love and so it's it's a process and self love is not as beautiful or glamorous as maybe um it's punted as it, 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 it's it's great it's <laughs> sometimes it's dirty sometimes it's painful because you have to look in the mirror and and love every bit of you know who you are not just physically I'm not talking about physical appearance I'm talking about are you a mean girl you know what I'm saying are you or are you kind are you 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 know the kind of person that people can come to you have a listening ear and all of those things and those are the things that you need to work on so if you're a mean girl for instance obviously you don't love that about yourself so you still need to work on that area you know of 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 who you are so for me that's how I you know, teach people self-love is that it's not always clean. Sometimes it's dirty. Sometimes it, you know, it's a lot of hard work. You have to love everything about you and accept yourself. And that's how you achieve self-love. Yes, absolutely. And we all heard that song by the good old MJ. That's Michael Jackson, y'all, where he says, I'm looking for the man in the mirror. (laughs) <laughs> and it's like, I'm asking you to change, change. the way. Yeah. yeah. And so many times we don't want to look ourselves in the mirror. But when you look in the mirror, you are reflect. You are a reflection of how you look um, outwardly. And sometimes it may be hard because your mind, body, and soul is not in alignment. But if yes. you really do the honest work and do that mirror exercise, and start to scrub away the old paradigm and get rid of, you know, the counterfeit, get rid of the viruses and reprogram your software, just like you take time to reprogram the software on your electronic devices, then you will begin to optimize who you are and live life optimally. So I want to challenge you to look for the man or woman Mm -hmm. in the mirror (laughs) And start to change. And change is not always going to be easy. But if you are resilient, if you are determined, if you start to see yourself as authentic, as beautiful, as magical, as creative, as a masterpiece, as chosen by God, as the son or daughter of a king, as one who, who knows who or he he is then you start to begin to enter into a new paradigm and you are going to walk life out on your terms and to always remember to ask for me you know I used to ask what I still do if I can just be a little bit like him every day just if people can look at me and see God. <laughs> so that's, that's what I used, you know, I still do. God, if people can look at me and see you. For me, the, the, the more a vision of him I become, the better. And, you know, then what's not to love? <laughs> so I agree 100% with everything that you are saying right now. Absolutely. And then the other exercise I want to talk about is, understanding your core values and your characteristic traits 
because once you know what your core values are and you know what your characteristic traits are, that is going to help you remain rooted and steadfast. And if you think about the analogy of building a home, a home will not be able to stand without a steady and sturdy foundation, just like your vehicle will not be able to run without fuel or without being charged for those of you who are EVs, electric vehicle lovers. Yes. <laughs> so what foundation do you need to have in order for you to fuel yourself? So Tola, as we come into the call to action part of this segment, what do you want that audience to gravitate to? Whether it is a challenge you have for them, whether mm-hmm. it is an exercise you want them to do, or just simply get involved in your community via your website and social media and start to submerge themselves in the work that you're doing so they can shift. Yeah, so one of the things I like to challenge people to do is to stop competing with other people and start competing with yourself. So I always say, um, as long as you can be a better version of yourself than you were a week ago, then there's progress, right? (laughs) And progress happens to be my other name, by the way. It's the name my dad gave me. (laughs) So I'm all about progress. (laughs) So if you can look yourself again in the mirror, if we're doing that mirror work and be like, you know, it it does, yeah, and it does, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be, you know, my muscles are developing right now. And a a month ago, they were not like this (laughs) in your case. The baby is healthy, it's growing and whatever, you know, <laughs> as long as you are a better version of yourself than you were a month ago, a year ago. So start challenging yourself. You know, it's you versus you. There's a, there's a, an album of Asha's. Asha is my favorite, one of my favorite artists. And I think it's Asha versus Asha. That's the name of the album. And I love that. So for me, it's always Tola versus Tola. <laughs> so that's the one um, call to action I'd love to leave the audience with. But also to ask people to check out my website, um, which is um, www.zulusingleandfab. Um, dot com and also to follow me on my podcast you know listening if you like what we talk about on the podcast I always have guests who talk about a positive mindset and self-development and if you want to be a guest you can always reach out and I'd be happy to have you Yes, and thank you for plugging that call to action and your website information. So are you on any social media platforms? I am on Instagram. I am on Facebook as well, but not really that active. But anyway, (laughs) on Facebook, I'm actually more active on my uh, business account, which is Phoenix Rising Life Coach, which is my business. So I also do post snippets of the podcast regularly on on Facebook. And on um, Instagram, again, you can look me up under Phoenix Rising is more my um, personal account. And then my business account is Phoenix Rising Life Coach. Amazing. And thank you so much, Thola, for coming on here. Audience, all of Thola's contact information will be in the show notes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We are on 40 plus platforms. You could also see all things video content on our YouTube channel, which is at Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp, like my name. And for those of you interested in becoming a brand sponsor, space is limited, but you can find more information by heading to genesisamariskemp.net or sending me an email at genesisamariskemp at gmail.com. Because of each one of you supporting the mission, we are now ranked in the top 2% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts per www dot listen notes dot com so i want to thank each one of you once again for supporting the guests that i bring on as well as the mission of gems which is to educate inspire and motivate while we weave in diversity equity inclusion and belonging because it does take all of us coming together to make this world a better brighter place. Until next time, peace, love, 
and lots of blessings. Have yourself an amazing day. And remember, self-love is the best love. Self-care and self-awareness will get you on your road to living life optimally and really being fulfilled because you love yourself and who better to love you than you, boo?